Hello, this slideshow is going to be focused on introducing the slab based project to you. Later on, you'll be seeing some demonstrations on how to actually construct with the slabs for this project, um, as well as um, making plans for your project. So this particular clay project is focused on using slabs as a construction technique. And just to revisit, a slab is a flat piece of clay created by rolling a rolling pin over it. And in this photo here, we can see that this person is using a rolling pin to roll out this clay. And there's these two wooden slats placed on the side. This is to ensure that your slab doesn't become thinner than these wooden slats. And from, these, from the slab you create, you can actually cut it into different pieces and then actually use that for construction later on. So sometimes we want our slabs to be soft or hard. Depending on the moisture content of the slab, your slab will be soft or stiff. Um, for the focus of this project, we're gonna be working with slabs that are much more firm. But for example, this teapot here, to achieve these curves, and this curve right here for the handle, they had to have the slabs be soft so you can achieve this form. And when you think about the coil bowl project you we just completed, the slab that you placed on top or inside the mold was soft. And so that's great for forming organic forms or works that do require a mold. So slabs that are stiff, they're used to create boxes and usually geometric shaped containers and tiles and other sculptural pieces. With hard slabs, um, slabs that are stiff, they have less moisture, but there's still enough moisture so we can attach them together. And ideally, the slabs should be leather hard when used for construction. So your slab based project is going to focus on constructing a birdhouse. Using the slab technique for construction, you're gonna create a birdhouse that will include a roof and use several surface decoration tex texture techniques. We're gonna look at some examples here, but I'm going to emphasize that your birdhouse design, it could be very traditional, similar to what I will be demoing in the classroom, or you could go for a very non-traditional birdhouse. So these birdhouses are definitely much more traditional. For example, the example on the left here has a pointed roof and there's a large opening. This design is definitely not a traditional birdhouse. So if you're thinking, eh, I'm not really interested in making a birdhouse, Miss J, well then just get in the mindset that you're creating a small house made out of slabs. So these two examples, they're both ba made by high school students. This one, you can see they've changed up the designs a bit on the front. And this one has also a non-traditional form for the house. So if you're already thinking about doing something different than what you see in this example here on the left, just keep in mind, we're gonna be using slabs to do the construction. Uh, we will be painting our birdhouses later on. This example has been glazed, but the details on the roof are very interesting. Your birdhouse can have a theme. It's not required, but sometimes when students have a hard time of thinking of ideas, they usually stick to a theme. So the theme for this birdhouse was based off of the Hiyao Miyazaki film called Princess Mononoke, which is a Japanese animation film. But your birdhouse could have a sports theme, it could ha have a food theme, it could be based on a beach, could be based on a house in the mountains. If you're already thinking about giving a theme for your birdhouse, 
We're going to definitely plan that out during the planning stage, but I am emphasizing that your birdhouse does not require a theme. So here are two views of the same birdhouse. You can see they did a very elaborate, non-traditional roof. And you can see a top view there of what the roof looked like. And this birdhouse here on the left had a very interesting structure. And this birdhouse does follow all the project requirements. Okay, so your birdhouse cannot be looking like that. First of all, I know the photo is a horrible quality. It's very pixelated, but the structure just looks really bad. This would make me very nervous if you did that with your roof. This just looks haphazard. So we're trying to make birdhouses that are very refined, polished, and finished. So what is the project objectives for you, you're creating a freestanding birdhouse made of slabs. You're gonna be using additive and subtractive surface decoration methods to embellish the house. Some of these methods you are already familiar with. You'll be creating a blueprint and using temp templates to plan the size and pieces of the slabs. And this is a technique we do continue in 3D Design 2 and 3. It's just a great strategy you're also conveying the use of texture using various ceramic tools, and I'll be demonstrating a few new tools for you. You'll be using the score and slip technique to attach slabs together. You'll be using clay tools to create textures. You'll be using reinforcement coils and the score and slip method to attach the slabs together. And of course, you'll be demonstrating excellent craftsmanship by smoothing out the clay surface, hiding score marks, and maintaining clay at the proper moisture level. Having taught this project many times, this is key. If your slabs dry out more than they should be when you construct, you might have to restart parts of your project, which I know can be very frustrating. So templates, what are they? Basically, they're, piece, they're, they're drawn on pieces of paper. We cut them out and we trace them onto the slab. This just cuts down the need for you to actually have to measure on your slab because the paper is already pre-measured for you. Your birdhouse will require textures and the textures and the details, this is what makes the birdhouse look good. And yes, adding details does take time, but that's what makes your art pop. It shows off what you can do. So let's talk about the surface decoration methods. First one's called incising. This is where you're cutting into the clay. Think of incision, right? Incision, you're cutting, but you're not cutting all the way through. The lines are shallow and they're not carved out. So this is where these two birdhouses use incising here on the roof and then here on the side of the house. We can say these lines are also an example of incising. Piercing, this is what you this is when you're cutting completely through the wall to remove shapes. This is how you're creating a door, windows, any type of shapes that you're going to cut directly through the wall. Now, you may be wondering, what about this? What about these? This, it looks like a shape of a sun. That is a carving, that is not a piercing. Impressions, this is where you're pressing objects onto the clay surface to create an indentation. You can use actual forms, you can use tools, but you also know how to do this using the texture rollers and the texture mats. I also have lace that I'll be demonstrating later on. So if you're interested in actually using lace to impress on the clay, you can get pretty cool designs from that. 
carving. This is where you're removing areas of clay around a design to create a raised surface. This is more deliberate than in, in incising. Incising, you're just making little lines that are very shallow. Carving, you're carving big chunks of clay away from the surface. So this example here, these shapes, they were actually carved out. The lines are incising. Appliques, this is where you're creating 3D forms and you're attaching them to the surface. Some of you already did this for your monster and for your um, statement plaques. So again, we're focusing on four specific ways to create texture, incising, carving, impressions, and appliques. Piercings, they create holes in the walls. So you're gonna start by making plans for your birdhouse and for the designs. Definitely check out the student examples that I have available. Um, first of all, you'll want to think about the form and the appearance of your birdhouse. Do you want to do something more traditional? Do you want to do something a little different? Please don't just copy another person's creation, but you can be inspired by it. Also, think about the size. There is a size requirement for your birdhouse. Do you want to construct a traditional box? Do you want to use traditional shapes for the windows? What type of roof are you going to use? Is something going to be placed on the roof? What decorations are you going to use? How do those surface decorations uh, create texture? Do they contribute to a theme? Yes, you can use coils to make forms. You can make forms using the pinch technique. Really, this is, this is your last clay project. So demonstrate to me what you have learned about constructing in clay. And again, so many different things you can do with your birdhouse. This birdhouse here on the left has a much more traditional roof. This is definitely more um, non-traditional in terms of the roof. And this one actually has a four-sided roof. So we could say the roof is kind of like a pyramid. You're gonna be creating a drawing for the front and sides views of your house. Your sketch must include sizes. Tell me the sizes you plan to use for each slab. Details, what shapes are you gonna cut out? What surface decoration methods are you going to use? I will be demonstrating this for you as well. Here's an example of a sketch from several years ago. So we got a front view, a side view, and this student did wanna draw a back view as well. But you can see how they noted the sizes, they made notes about where they would be cutting out things and what they would create as an applique. And this is what the paper will look like. This is what the paper you'll be using to create your drawing on. So this is the front and back view. And then the other side of the paper is for the side view of your house. And again, so many different examples you can look at, so many possibilities for this birdhouse. So the next step is starting your plan.